Hello everyone, welcome back to Medical Coding Club. This is Chandrika. So today let me discuss uh, regarding chapter 1 specific ICD coding guidelines. So chapter 1 is certain infectious and parasitic disease. The code range between A00 to B99 and then for COVID we have codes for uh, U07.1 to U09.9. So let's begin. So first, understand what are the specific coding guidelines that we have for chapter 1. So we have coding guidelines for HIV infections, then sepsis, severe sepsis and septic shock with organ dysfunction and then coronavirus infection, Zika virus infection and methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus uh, guidelines and then infectious agents as a cause of uh, the disease and infectious resistance to antibiotics okay these are the guidelines that we have to study for the chapter one so in this uh, we have we have to the prominent guidelines are hiv infections and sepsis guidelines okay rest is also important but uh, you know uh, to learn or uh, to uh, in the first steps you can just uh, focus on hiv and sepsis so to learn everything, please do join my basic to advanced medical coding course uh, where I'll teach everything with the clear cut examples and also I'll teach with the practice questions. Okay, so for today's class or for today's topic, I'm just discussing HIV infections guideline. So we'll see what are the guidelines we have for HIV. So the first coding guideline for HIV from the chapter one is code only confirmed cases. Okay, so by name, by reading the uh, sentence, you might have understood code only confirmed cases. Okay, so here one more thing, we will always code confirmed uh, HIV codes, uh, B20 code we will be assigning. But one uh, exception is we don't consider or we don't uh, follow this in hospital IP guidelines. Okay, and then uh, in this context, you know, while coding the confirmed cases, you don't require a documentation of positive lab test. Okay, if provider diagnostic statement, if provider says that HIV was positive without uh, having any lab, okay, then also you can consider it is a positive based on the provider documentation and you can code it as HIV confirmed. Okay, next. Coming to selection and sequencing of HIV codes. Selection and sequencing of HIV codes. So here, patient admitted for HIV related condition. Whenever patient get admits to a hospital or a clinic uh, with the HIV related conditions. Okay, so you know, uh, the HIV associated conditions, we will be assigning B20 as a primary diagnosis and whatever the associated condition is there, we will be listing it secondary. Okay, so what is the exception for the second coding guideline, guideline is? So for uh, hemolytic uromic syndrome associated with the HIV disease. Okay, so when if patient chief complaint is regarding a uromic syndrome, which is also associated with the HIV, here you should not consider B20 as a primary code Instead, you have to code D59.31 uh, primary diagnosis. So you have to code uh, hemolytic uromic syndrome as a primary code followed by you have to code your HIV positive B20. Okay, uh, rest remaining other conditions whichever associated with the uh, uh, HIV. Uh, if patient getting admitted for HIV related condition, then definitely you have to code B20 as primary and the associated condition as secondary. I hope uh, uh, this is clear. So next, patient with the HIV disease admitted for unrelated condition. So here, patient is seen for unrelated condition, uh, like that patient is also having HIV positive. So whatever the primary concern here, which is totally unrelated to HIV condition, maybe patient seen for fracture today. So fracture is nowhere related to HIV. So what we have to do in this case, which code we have to sequence first? 
first priority we will give it to unrelated condition okay the reason for encounter should be sequenced first and then secondary we will be coding b20 okay next whether the patient is newly diagnosed so if patient is getting newly diagnosed for uh, you know in this case the sequencing decision is irrelevant we cannot decide on this particular newly diagnosed concept next asymptomatic hiv so what is asymptomatic asymptomatic means a patient with no sign and symptoms okay so which code we have to assign with the asymptomatic patient uh, you know getting positive result for hiv we have to go with z21 okay again there is one exception if the provider documents any hiv related conditions okay due to hiv they got some other uh, associated conditions okay then you cannot assign z21 we will be assigning b20 okay so next patient with inconclusive hiv serology so here uh, for that patient particular patient they have performed hiv lab test so the lab results are inconclusive so they they cannot decide whether it is positive or negative so in this case we will be assigning r75 next previously diagnosed hiv related illness so if patient with the known prior diagnosis for hiv related illness it is also should be coded to b20 and we cannot assign any other codes next hiv infection in pregnancy childbirth so as we know uh, for this uh, chapter 15 we will give uh, the codes you know priority and we will keep it primary so in this concept what if pregnant lady is having hiv so again here also we will be assigning pregnancy code primary followed by our confirmed hiv code that is secondary we will be assigning b20 first listed that is primary code should be o98.7 okay we have to check whether it is complicating pregnancy or childbirth and then we will be accordingly you can assign the pregnancy code that is from chapter 15 and secondary we will be assigning b20 okay so next again if patient uh, see patient with the asymptomatic hiv infection so again patient is pregnant and uh, for hiv there is no symptoms so here we will be assigning uh, secondary z21 instead of b20 so next is encounter for testing for hiv so this is like screening the patient is seen for screening for hiv so here the patient is being to seen to determine his or her hiv status so when our patient get admit for encounter the screening we will be coding z11.4 okay z11.4 okay which says encounter for hiv and then an additional code z71.7 which is for counseling okay say for example patient got uh, you know patient came to clinic not admitted just came to clinic for a screening purpose upon uh, doing screening or upon completion of screening provider uh, provided counseling okay so then again we may have to assign one more code that is z71.7 and when patient returns to be informed uh, his or hiv test results are negative so for example on the same encounter a patient lab test came okay and same encounter patient lab test also returned so they are informing that this patient is hiv i know his patient is negative for hiv so that time we, we just need to assign counseling code z71.7 okay this is enough and next we have a hiv managed by antiretroviral medications okay so whenever 
already patient uh, you know hiv positive patient he is taking medication from long term okay from long time patient is taking hiv medication so here what we have to code we will be assigning b20 for our confirmed hiv along with this we have to use additionally one more code that is z79.899 so long term use of medication okay which gives some meaning regarding long term usage of medication and then last encounter for hiv prophylaxis measures so if patient is exposed or if patient undergoing pre exposure for prophylaxis we have to assign z7 z29.81 okay this is again uh, additionally we can use uh, and also if any hiv risk factors are there we have to assign that code as well so which code we here if patient is uh, admit like if he undergoes pre exposure or exposed to prophylaxis the code you should assign is z29.81 okay so these are the prominent specific coding guidelines for hiv from the chapter 1 okay so i hope uh, each guidelines are clear and now we'll see few practice questions okay so yeah So the first question: Patient with HIV admitted for a treatment of Kaposi sarcoma. What is the principal diagnosis code, or what is the primary DX? So here, as I said, the which guideline here we have to remember? We have to follow when patient admitting for admitting for HIV related condition. So Kaposi sarcoma is, you know, it's a cancer. which is related which is associated with the hiv okay so that you will be assigning b20 primary and followed by you know generally in the coding way followed by you can use your kaposi sarcoma code okay so here they are questioning about only primary diagnosis so you should assign b20 since the patient is getting admitted Uh, for hiv related condition so next so what is the correct coding sequence when patient with hiv admitted for an unrelated condition so one more guideline we have so the sequencing guideline whenever patient admits hiv patient admits for unrelated condition we will always give priority for the unrelated condition so here unrelated condition should be coded first so patient admitted for a broken leg so we have to code option b first we have to code for broken leg then followed by b20 okay so this guideline is regarding patient with a hiv admitted for unrelated condition so you can read the explanation as well and the third question is which of the following code should be used for a patient undergoing screening for hiv without any symptoms so here the patient is patient is taking screening so you have to assign screening code that is z11.4 and with this screening if further provider documents regarding counseling we may have to code z71 71.7 additionally So next patient with the HIV infection is managed on antiretroviral therapy so the you know the guideline is regarding long term usage of medication so which is the code we have to use we have to z use z79.899 okay for a patient with the HIV on long term anti uh, you know retroviral therapy z79.899 is assigned along with the b20 so last question a pregnant patient is admitted with an hiv related illness which code should be assigned as a primary or a principal diagnosis so this is hiv complicating pregnancy concept so we have to give priority to pregnancy 
and we have to code pregnancy complicating code as primary and uh, you know the secondary di diagnosis should be b20 okay so these are the uh, some question some practice questions for the chapter 1 uh, regarding hiv guideline okay so all these questions were regarding hiv concept only so still we have uh, four or five other guidelines we have sepsis and you have to also check you know particular guidelines and practice questions so everything you can learn in my classes so if you are a beginner and uh, you know if you are just starting to learn then you can just consider my classes where you can learn from the basic to advanced level okay so yeah next as we uh, that's it so yeah thank you for watching please do subscribe and uh, share my youtube channel with your friends okay and also please do comment if you like the video and uh, uh, you know if you if you find it useful so that at least i will have that motivation to upload uh, you know for sepsis or any chapter 2 guidelines likewise okay so whenever i will be free i'll i'll try to make a videos so yes, we'll see how it goes further. Thank you for watching.